I had zero belief in God or religion and never had had. I was raised an atheist and I lived my whole life as an atheist. I walked in these doors as an atheist. Um, but we kept coming. I can't say at what point I started to I like become open to the fact that oh there's something to this malarkey eh? and anyway you know long story which hasn't been short already uh, but cut it now is that yeah it took some time but slowly but surely I was opening myself up to 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 love to mm. religion to Jesus's message mm. and I mean as I'm talking about it now I'm still like Wait, is that you you're talking about? And it is, and it's wonderful. And uh, so uh, getting back to relating that to uh, the message, like the people in the wilderness now, I, I didn't really relate this to me when we spoke about being in the wilderness and how I could relate to it. And, but now I, I see my wilderness was everything outside Of, of God accepting me, accepting him. Does that make sense? Or her, or... Because even when I first opened myself up to it, it was like, um, yeah, a bit late for that, you know, and you, you've said and done and ridiculed and da-da-da-da. I mean, for me now, I see uh, that, yeah, my wilderness was everything before, really walking through these doors. No pressure, guys. But, <laughs> but yeah, being here has shown me a whole new way of life and a group of people that I've connected with and can relate to who are intellectual and not just, you know, dogmatic followers of something. They're thinking people. So there's got to be something to that, right? I mean, if you can have all these smart people around you that can have this faith, I want that too, and that's what I'm working on, and, and I think it gets deeper and deeper for me all the time. I couldn't imagine church not being part of my life. I couldn't imagine Jesus not, I'm not gonna say dominating my actions, because I'm not there yet either. I might be on the edge of wilderness a little, but edge is the key thing now. I'm no longer in the middle of it, and, and Jesus has helped me to uh, to find a way of I think deeply connecting with myself more, which I still run away from a lot. But at some point, it dawned on me that really I had been invited to learn. I'd been invited to discover how I could be. be part of something that I want to be a part of, but have a lot of self-consciousness and fear. And that's not gone away, it's just less. <laughs> if, you know, um, but the more I'm part of the change maker thing, I am really overwhelmed by everybody in there. Um, their willingness to discuss their thoughts and often feelings and uh, to, to be vulnerable and to let me be vulnerable. I love the whole concept of, of God's dream, you know? God's dream for us. I'm not sure where I fit in it all yet. Hmm. But I think I'm gonna be able to do something. I'm gonna be able to help somewhere. Change maker has shifted my faith in Jesus. Um, because I'm, I've learned more about him, because we discuss Jesus more. And the more I learn about him, the more I realize that, oh, this is like classic, but he is the way. I mean, live what he preached and we could all be so amazing. I believe in Jesus because I'm learning about Jesus. 
And that's what we need to do. We just need to learn and listen. The thing you should know about the change maker process is that it's really turning the idea of church around. It's, it's not making the priority this place. The priority is God's dream, his want. It's his dream for us to live the lives that, that he sent his son to teach us to live. Um, and that, that is what Changemaker is doing. That is what Changemaker is going to do. And it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. You know, it's not just us, guys. There's a lot of change makers out there. You're, you're change makers. That's it. I mean, you are. We all are.